Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering .conf18. Brought to you by Splunk. Welcome back to Splunk Conf 18, hashtag Splunk Conf 18. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We're going to take a cruise with the data. Kurt Persaud is here. He's the director of IT for guest technology at Carnival Cruise Line, so he's the ship. And Ariel Molina is here. He's the senior director of web development and enterprise architecture at Carnival Cruise Line. He's the shore. Gents. Welcome to theCUBE, good to ah, see you. Hap happy to be here, very, very. Thanks for having us, guys. Dave, Dave I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, well, this is kind of, you know, Splunk is known for a little tongue All right, let, action, let's so. keep this interview on course. So, Ar <laughs> Arnold, you got it. So, Arnold Donald, your CEO, was on stage today with Doug Merritt, a very inspirational individual. Uh, you guys are an amazing company. You see those ads and just go, wow. Just right. makes you want to go. It's fun. But, um, Ariel, let's start with you. You kind of your role. Okay. What you guys are doing here. Let's kick it off for us. So um, no, it's fantastic. Great to be here. I think great energy in the in the in the conference today. The keynote was fantastic. Uh, it was great to see our CEO up there and really represent our company. Uh, really talk about sort of where we're heading and how Splunk helps us along that journey when it comes to data. Um, you know, things are changing, they're moving fast every, every day, right? We're, we're pressured into delivering more value, delivering innovation at a faster pace, and uh, Splunk is a key enabler of that for us, right? And Kurt, you, at any one point in time, you guys said you have 250,000 guests yep, so on then. the seas around the world. Yep. Um, wow, and everybody wants to be connected these days, so that's kind of your purview, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, like, five, 10 years ago, uh, you know, what sold cruises was the ability to be disconnected. Uh, you know, right now, you know, people want to be connected more than ever. Um, so what we try to do beyond just like the connectivity and you know, giving them better uh, bandwidth and stuff like that, was to try to de develop products on board that helps them be connected, be social, but not miss out on the product that we're actually selling, which is the ship, the people, the crew, and the actual entertainment and the staff on board, right? So we're trying to make people social but not anti-social with some of the technologies that we're bringing on board as well. Yeah, Doug Merritt said today we're kind of, a, we're all data emitters. Right. And I think the number was, you, know, you guys will serve as 13 million guests in, a give, in any given yep. year. That's correct. So huge, huge number of data emitters. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, Ariel, you, you obviously sure. are analyzing yep. a lot of data right. as well. So how has the use of data changed over the years at Carnival? Maybe you could kind of take us through that. Well, ultimately I think it's about um, personalizing the experience, right? So how do we use the data to better understand what folks are looking for in that guest journey? So we call the guest journey everything from planning uh, uh, on a voyage, purchasing a voyage, uh, purchasing all the, the data involved, I mean, all of the, the auxiliary items that are, are yep. up for, for sale and then ultimately making it into the ship. So what we're doing these days is looking at mining this data and looking for opportunities. Um, you know, on the dot com side of things, obviously it's about resiliency and personalization, right? How do we, how do we deliver innovation and through multiple releases and then do so in a resilient way? And a lot of those innovations typically are on personalization. And we see that move the needle, right? When we see that we're incentivized to have more folks uh, book online, right? That's, that's ultimately good for the bottom line. So um, data is a big part of that, personalization, resiliency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of those interesting things we look at. Most people probably think of cruise ships as like, oh, well, your vacation and right. uh, you know transportation, everything like that. You're a technology company now. Yeah, uh, you know, you're, you're tied in. You know, you've got multiple mobile apps before and, and during. Maybe you know, bring us a little bit inside. Uh, yeah, you know, what's that, what I that's mean, like. Uh, over the past uh, you know three years, we've seen a, a great transformation in terms of the the technologies that we're bringing on board. I mean, you name it in terms of like you know whether it's uh, very high end uh, you know uh, tools like Splunk and other APM tools that we use to you know cutting edge technology like AI, you know uh, chatbots, um, facial recognition. We're using a sure. full breadth of like all these innovation uh, in, in terms of technology to try to enhance guest experience. And, and to Ariel's point, you know the, the focus is really on trying to be uh, very personal, uh, trying to personalize this information, trying to personalize your guest experience, and using all those data points that we're capturing to really target what a custom experience looks for you. Um, uh, it's really interesting because uh, you know, one of the things that we try to do is uh, in, in, in that personalization is to try to manage those micro moments. So we're trying to get you what you want, we're trying to get you the feedback that you need, 
in that micro moment so that you can do your transaction and move on to your enjoying your cruise. Yeah, yeah there, there's something that you mentioned. You, you want to balance, the, you want people to take advantage of what's there. Absolutely. You know, you said you used to think of vacation like this, you disconnect yourself. Right. Um, you, you know, help, help understand that balance. Uh, yeah. You'd be surprised. So uh, we were just recently in a cruise, my family and I, and we, and we don't cruise as often as you would imagine because you work at the company, <laughs> but we when you do, it feels good to be a customer, right? And there's so much activity going on on a ship on a given day. Right, it's it's very hard to understand where to be at a certain point, a certain point in time, and some people find that overwhelming. So what things like the app does, right, is is really allow you to curate your day, to say, hey, uh, you like music? Let's focus on events that are music oriented, and that's going to be in location X, Y, and Z on the ship, and they're going to be sequenced. So I mean, that's personalizing the experience, but it's also sort of ensuring that folks are really taking advantage of the full product. Yeah. So that's technology. Yeah. The, the, from our perspective, the technology should be kind of like in the background, it's more complimentary. The real product is really the ship, right? The, the, the crew members, the activities, the entertainment on board. That's the product we really want people to kind of like really connect to. The stuff that we do is auxiliary in terms of like, hey, let me help you get those, make, maximize those experiences on board. And that's what we're really trying to do. If we can get that done and accomplished, then we would, we would have done our jobs. So the app is the digital conduit to the physical experience. Exactly. If you have a good app, it. it makes all the difference in the world. I mean, if you're right. at Disney and you're trying to figure right. out what's next, what do the lines look yeah. like, you, know, you got a lot of people on a ship and you Absolutely. want to prioritize, like you, you'll exactly. call it curating your experience. Right. So, so what, it's all about the app, as they say. What, what's the state of the app? I mean, the, the first, you know, the 1.0 probably yeah. <laughs> needed a little work. Where are you now in the evolution yeah, of the Yeah, so app? we're like in a, in a 2.0 uh, release version of it. Um, and the, the original version, we started with uh, kind of like what we call the, uh, the meat and potatoes. The very basic stuff that, hey, where can I get food? You know, what is the entertainment line up for the day? Um, we started off with some uh, innovation in terms of being able to generate, um, uh, we did a chat, kind of like communication so that people can chat with their families on board without having to purchase a plan or have any, uh, any um, you know, bandwidth uh, needs. And then as we evolve that, then we start to go into things that are more transactional. So you're able to purchase your photos digitally um, through the app. Uh, we leverage facial recognition software so that if a photographer on a ship takes a picture of you, it recognizes that it's you and it puts your photo in, the, in your photo stream and your photo album. So very, very convenient. Uh, we do things like sell shore excursions in terms of transactional stuff. You can sit at the pool and say, oh, tomorrow's a port day, I'm going to be in the Bahamas, let me see what shore excursion I want to do, and you can do it directly from the app before even moving. Um, so now, uh, as we evolve that, now as Ariel said, now we're trying to leverage all that data now to go beyond the transactions and make things even more personalized. Sure. So I know that you're, uh, you know, you favor the casino. Maybe you like, uh, are you're a spa person. You want a facial. You know, we'll target you. We say, hey, on your previous cruise, you did this. Let's target you because we might have something special waiting for you on board. And then carry carry that across the journey, right? So now they leave our ships, and how do we get them to come back to our ships, yep. right? How do you create uh, that conversation that's ongoing, notifications about what's going on on our ships? Um, people follow their favorite cruise director. People follow um, you know, a lot of the unique experiences there. How do you bring that to the online, to the dot com experience, so that when they're thinking about that next cruise, they can remember what that last cruise was about and they can know what's happening in each one of our ships in real time. So yeah. uh, it's a journey and uh, technology definitely is a huge enabler for us of the experience. So. So what's the data architecture look like? Yeah. I mean, we always talk in theCUBE about the innovation sandwich sure. of the future. It used to be Moore's Law, you know, right. it, you know, doubling every two years. Okay, great. Now it's data plus machine intelligence and you scale with the cloud. Yeah. What's your data architecture look like? Well, I think it's early days. I think it's, it's, it's really, I mean, they're all over the place, right? I think there's silos within the enterprise that are really maximizing data. Um, I think that that trend continues to happen, but I think there is, there, there's got to be, and, and in the enterprise architecture world, it's sort of about sort of wrangling that and figuring out how the value, how data from different uh, dispersed touch points uh, affect that. So it, it's, it's early days. I do think that the, you're starting to see the machine learning algorithms do play a part. Um, I'm seeing it personally more in the operation side of the world, right? So all these systems, at the end of the day, they need to be resilient, they need to have high ser you know, service levels, right? So what I'm seeing now is tools, and Splunk, you, you, you saw that today, uh, being able to really be predictive about what, where the anomalies are, right? Yeah. So traditionally you were having to log errors and then interpret errors and then that will be the way you action some of these things. Um, the predictive nature of some of these tools are such that you're being proactive, right? So, so again, when you talk about data, there's so many different places you can go. If you think about our 
technology stack and, and, and that guest experience point of view, it's all about really maintaining that SLAs, uh, resolving issues as quickly as possible, um, and there's a ton of data in that space, right? I mean, it's everywhere, there's a ton of signals to it. Well, and you guys know, you, you, in, we tend not to throw stuff away in yeah. technology, you just, yeah. you sort of, you have to figure out how to integrate. Right, right, <laughs> right. A single view of the customer is probably one of those, right, as well, right? So at the end of the day, all we're, we're, we could, what more information are we collecting about our guests to ultimately personalize that experience? So it's centered around that. And that's challenging. I yeah. mean, you yeah. know, you look at the airlines and your, your app, which you love, the airline apps. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. you're now like yeah. tethered to them. Right. But the, the, the phone experience and even the, 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 the laptop experience, are a little bit different, you know, and it's because of the data, it's very, very challenging. Sure. Have you figured that out, or are you sort of figuring that out? Well, that's APIs. That a single experience? That's APIs, right? It's that experience API layer, right? Being able to um, activate that data, which is sitting in distinct silos, and then do so across those experience uh, apps, the experience channels, which is .com, the app, I mean, the chat bot, the, the, you know, there's so many interfaces out there, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a a solid, mature API strategy that's going to get us there, mm -hmm. right? And, and I think one of the things that our challenge is, um, as, as you know, technology partners, is the ability to kind of like build those platforms so that the next wave of conversions, as you mentioned, there's some disjointed uh, experience across like the desktop view versus the mobile view, is to try to bring those conversions together. And in order to do that, like Ariel said, you know, maybe making some API extraction layers, uh, you know, figuring out how to mine the data better, figuring out how to leverage uh, insights from uh, different tools or, or machines uh, and sensors. We have a, a ton of sensors on the ships as well. And bringing all those things together to be able to put us in a position that when we do finally get a seamless conversion, uh, we're, we're ready for it from a technology and a platform perspective. All right, so it's obviously, it's obvious why data is important for your business. Uh, you actually did a press release with Splunk. Maybe explain a little bit of how Splunk Cloud fits into this discussion we've been having. Well, I mean, cloud really removes the barriers, right, of, of experimentation, right? So uh, right size, how do you right size a problem you don't understand very well, right? I think cloud uh, really helps with that. So we're looking forward to being able to, you know, be, be flexible. It's, it's flexibility in architecture, flexibility in, in infrastructure. So that's absolutely the use case. I think security's got a number of use cases. Um, you, you see it every day in the news, right? So, um, so yeah, more opportunities, I would say, it's scale, it's that flexibility that's taking us uh, the cloud route. Well, right. and you, when you think Splunk, you think security. Yep. You, know, you got guys in the knock. That's yeah. not, not where you guys are. You're kind of closer to the sure. business. Right. right. Um, right. And so you're, you're seeing Splunk, as I said before, permeate yeah. into yeah. other parts of the organization. Yeah. Absolutely. You, 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 would have, you kind of expected you know, somebody else to do that, I don't know, the Hadoop guys, or, and it's interesting. Splunk never used to talk about big data. Right. Now that the big data era is you know, sort of behind us, yeah. Splunk talks a lot about yeah. big data. It's kind of an interesting flip. Sure. I would say democratizing the data. That's the stuff that I liked, that I liked, that I heard today, right? Yeah. How do you get these tools away from the IT operators that are writing these complex queries to get insights? And how do you elevate that up to the analyst and the product managers? And how do they get access to those interfaces? You know, drag and drop, WYSIWYG, whatever you want to call it. But I think yeah. that's kind of where I see this happening. More so than you know, machine learning that's great and predictive, but just empowering others to really leverage that data. So I would say Splunk is, is yeah. leading there. It was good to see some of that stuff today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> putting the power where it really needs to be, where it's, it's the end users, the guys that are making the decisions, it's the product owners, it's the product managers that are, that are making those slight tweaks to that interface or to that design or to that uh, experience that makes a difference, right? Uh, and that's what we're trying to do and, uh, and leverage you know, with tools like Splunk as well. Even the simple visualization, right? Yeah. I mean, the stuff oh, that's out of the box powerful. is really important for the business user, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. The out of the box part's another thing that I saw today, which is more sort of curating for a particular use case and saying, hey, we're going to build that end to end and really turn it on and activate it a little sooner, right? So that infrastructure product we saw today, I think that's a, a big step forward where you know, you, you're a platform, but at some, time, at some point you're going to have to start being a little more vertical in the way that you bring to market the way you, they did with security. So. Yeah, and Doug talked about, you know, Doug Merritt, that is, talked about data is, is messy and the messiest landscape you know, is, is, is the data. A and then he talked about um, being able to sort of organize that data in the moment. So I think about, okay, just put it in the, we like to call it data ocean. Yeah. Right, and just capture it. Yeah. But then having the tools to be able to actually look at it 
in whatever schema you want, you know, when you want it, is a challenge that people have. I mean, did he, my question is, did he describe it accurately? I think yes, but then can you actually do that with this messy data? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think it's a great concept. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out uh, you know, going forward. Um, but I think, uh, you know, in our world, like, I mean, we have several use cases where that makes sense. Uh, you know, we have a very captive audience for seven to 10 days. Um, so we really have a very limited amount of time to make a really good impression. So it's not only about attracting first time cruisers, trying to get a repeat cruiser. So that limited uh, time frame that we have to, to kind of like leave a really lasting impression is very limited. So things like, hey, recovery in terms of getting metrics or data real time and being able to act on it immediately. Say you had a bad experience at the sushi bar. If, if that, we're able to grab that information, whatever uh, you know, uh, data points that allow us to understand what happened, and then do a quick recovery, we may have a guess for repeat crews, right? You know, that, that, those are the things that we're trying to do, and, and if, if what Doug is saying is, is, is uh, something that they've you know, uh, kind of solved or, or are able to try to kind of solve in, in, a, in a good way, that is very powerful for us as well, and we'll Real definitely time. see leverage in that. Last question, Ariel, you're saying off camera, it's kind of early days. Yeah. Yeah. What's the future hold? I mean, it's going to blow our minds. Blow yeah, our minds. Blow our minds. <laughs> oh, it's the predictive thing, right? It's it's bringing your favorite drink before you know you're you're ready to have it or something. I don't know. It, it's really it, it's you know it. The cruise line business, the travel and hospitality space is a very fun space to work in, yeah. right? We 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 yes. we get to really see you know our, our our guests enjoy the product and us as technologists, we get to see how technology moves the needle. So. Or, Continued innovation, right? If you're in the development side of the world, um, challenging yourself to deploy more often, to deliver more value more often, and if you're in the data side, how to get aggregate and compile this data at the, uh, you know, for, for ultimately what we're looking for, which is to enhance the guest experience, so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that real-time yeah. notion that you were talking yeah. about, Kurt, you could see that coming together and completely transforming the guest experience. So guys, yeah. thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was great Thank to have you. Thank awesome. you. Great to Congratulations you guys. on all your Thank success. You. Thank Good you. luck. Thanks all right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back at Splunk Conf 18. You're watching theCUBE, Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman. We're right back. Cool.